Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Getting Started with Research. Uh, today, my colleague Chris Anglum is going to be presenting essentially on how do you get started on doing some research. This session is being recorded and will be posted to our YouTube after this session ends, and the recording will be sent to anyone who registered for today's events. We will also have time at the end for Q&A, both recorded and unrecorded. Please don't hesitate to put your questions in the chat as we go, and I'll let Chris know if he needs to answer questions as we go through this webinar. So I'm going to go ahead and put myself on mute, and Chris, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Megan. I appreciate it. And as Megan said, this is this webinar is, uh, is getting started with research. I'm Chris Anglum, University Archivist and Reference Librarian at UDC, and a hearty welcome to you all on this beautiful fall day. So some of the things that we'll be talking about in this overview, which is a roadmap, our, our agenda is really a roadmap to the webinar. First thing we'll be talking about is the challenge of getting started, then the assignment parameters, brainstorm followed by brainstorming and then background information developing a topic and writing a thesis statement and this is followed by beginning research so first of all assignment parameters uh, so uh, what you will do what you should do first off is to review and understand the assignment that you have been given by your professor your research assignment be sure to follow the instructions. This includes the type of the paper, whether it's a basic report, analytical paper, or argumentative paper. The basic difference between an analytical paper and ar argumentative paper is that an analytical paper is a, uh, basically taking a more neutral stand. It's uh, identifying gaps in literature, focusing on uh, the question, and uh, uh, Coming and do and engaging in critical thinking, whereas an argumentative paper, uh, the you're taking you're trying to persuade the audience of the merits of a particular position. You're taking a position and defending it, and trying to persuade the audience that uh, you're taking the correct position on a certain issue. The other uh, parts of the assignment parameters that uh, you need to be uh, pay close attention to are the length, the size of the paper, formatting, citation style, that would be APA or uh, uh, Chicago Manual, MLA, and the deadline, how much time you have to complete. Also important is what sources are you uh, allowed to use? Uh, what sources are acceptable? Uh, are news sources acceptable? Are op-eds accessible? Or are you to rely on scholarly peer-reviewed sources? These are ex uh, these are uh, articles written by an expert on the field and reviewed by other experts on the field to guarantee quality. So be sure to choose a quality that uh, topic that meets uh, your uh, the requirements of the professor that uh, it should it should be an R a, a topic that you're interested in and manageable in terms of size and time. Next comes brainstorming. Uh, this helps uh, generates ideas at any time in the process. In thinking about uh, possible uh, topics, ask yourself which topics interest you the most. It also is very helpful be, uh, during the brainstorming uh, uh, part of uh, the process to. Uh, converse with your peers and other people who uh, may know some something about the general topic to gen generate some ideas. Some other uh, brainstorming strategies are to engage in free writing, writing uh, whatever comes to mind on a particular topic. So it can be, uh, as, as a term, uh, uh, suggests sort of a free range kind of thing uh, where you're writing down some uh, ideas uh, in mind on a particular topic and uh, uh, Hopefully, uh, this will coalesce into a, 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 a meaningful research topic. Another way of doing it that I find particularly useful is mapping or webbing, where you create a general topic and uh, branch it out. So you're doing an illustration uh, uh, using a chart and uh, bubbles and arrows and that sort of thing. So you're branching out to from it to any concepts that might be helpful, and uh, then uh, uh, some some of the approaches that would be also helpful in the brainstorming uh, phase is to uh, use uh, queries such as who, what, when, where, and how questions to help you develop and frame your your topic, and then uh, also think about various top. Uh, uh, Things related to your topic, such as who is affected, possible problems, possible solutions, and uh, possible causes. Next, we'll move to uh, background information. Uh, uh, 
this background information provides an overview to the subject. This includes terminology, dates, events, history, and relevant names or organizations related to the topic. It helps identify and describe uh, certain aspects of the topic, and you would use sources such as encyclopedias or dictionaries to obtain background information. Also, uh, find and use various keywords related to your topic to locate background information on the topic. Search or you can also search for keywords and read abstracts and journals. It not, it's not necessary to read the full article at this point, just the abstract, which is the editor's or author's uh, summary, about 130 words or so on, a, on, a, on the particular article. So you would want to look at some articles. You don't need to read the entire article at this point, but uh, just glance at the Keywords, glance at the abstract, see if they're relevant to what you're interested in writing on. So some examples of background information, again, are general overviews, terms and definitions, uh, historical perspectives, and some of the best sources to use would be uh, uh, dictionaries, encyclopedias, sometimes newspaper and magazine articles would be useful as well. And you can uh, uh, get uh, some pretty good dictionaries and encyclopedias uh, online in addition to the traditional print. Next, we'll move to uh, developing your topic. A well-defined topic is necessary to have a good research paper. Selecting and developing a topic is an ongoing process in which you define, revise, and refine your work. Uh, in selecting your topic uh, and narrowing your topic, you would do this after you've done some background reading. You would state some of the main concepts, ideas, and theories of, uh, in developing a topic, and then you would find some of the main issues involved with the topics and then you would also be in the process of narrowing your topic down from some broad ideas from what you started off with to uh, consistently narrowing it down to, again, make it manageable and make it significant, dealing with a, a small aspect of a large subject area. If you're looking at a, a, a topic, a meaningful topic that is a part of the subject area, but not encompassing the whole subject area itself. So... Uh, Find some main areas and pick uh, some uh, main a main issue or sub issues that would be uh, useful or helpful and something that again is interesting for you to write on. So uh, then uh, also use the queries in uh, developing your topic and again they are who what why where when and how these are very helpful in. Uh, 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 identifying issues and refining them to get to, to a topic that's both manageable and interesting for you to write on and also meets the requirements of the class. Next, you would uh, uh, work on uh, writing the thesis statement. The thesis uh, presents the central idea of your research, which summarizes what your paper is all about. The thesis explains your argument, focus, or purpose. So the process that you would go is to create your research questions. You would find or uh, uh, possible answers to your research questions, that, and then you would find supports that answers your uh, uh, your questions with evidence and the three parts of the uh, uh, of the thesis statement are the main point of the essay and uh, the uh, key points about the uh, particular topic or supports and then some of the uh, 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 subtopics that might be of interest to you you would have various topics and then you you would have some various subtopics and usually there is about uh, three or so subtopics that you would uh, uh, be looking at so this is a sample, a very simple uh, thesis statement. Uh, you would create a thesis statement based on the following. Education is important to have. So uh, some of your supporting uh, statements would be it, uh, education enhances a person's knowledge skill and skills. It enables a person to obtain a better paying job. It helps to make a person more in, a, a more informed citizen. So the thesis statement as a whole would be education is important to have because it enhances a person's knowledge and skills. It can enable a person to obtain a better paying job and helps make the person a more informed citizen. So this is a very basic, a very simple way of creating a thesis statement and uh, uh, as you uh, as you go on as this becomes more familiar for you you would be able to uh, do much more sophisticated thesis statements on your particular topics so how to begin your research uh, you would start by developing and refining your topic you would conduct a uh, preliminary search for relevant information your third step is to locate information and sources that are most promising and uh, uh, 
as you get more used to this, you would be able to identify as horses in your various fields that would be uh, particularly promising, or you would take the, uh, talk to your librarian or uh, a, a professor to get uh, some ideas on some sources that would be uh, the most promising for your particular areas. Then you would evaluate your sources, uh, see, see that this is a good source or uh, a not so good source, and there's any number of reasons, uh, any uh, number of bases on which you would evaluate your sources, including uh, the uh, authoritativeness of the author, currency, uh, the, and uh, whether, and again, how relate how it uh, relates to your particular topic that you're writing on. Take notes as you do your research and write a little bit of a, as you go, this makes it easier in the end. So you write a little bit after you get your source, take notes of it, uh, write how this particular, write a few uh, sentences on how this uh, source fits in with your overall topic. You also should, uh, you also must be able to cite your sources properly and follow the correct format and uh, uh, according to APA, MLA, uh, uh, and or Chicago Manual, and then uh, proofread at the end to ensure that the structure, grammar, and formatting is correct. So with that, uh, that's uh, that's the end of uh, my presentation. Is there uh, are there any questions or anything that I can uh, answer in this? Thank you so much, Chris. Just waiting to see if any questions are going to come in. Feel free to put them in the chat or uh, unmute yourself to ask. I've not got any questions, but that was really uh, remarkable. I couldn't take notes fast enough to get all of that down, but that seemed an ideal way to describe this process. Thank you very much. But thank, thank you. you Dr. And the recording will be posted after this session ends. So I'm going to go ahead and end the recording just in case there are any questions that want to be asked not recorded.